Hello everyone and welcome to the Threatened Ganglia Mini for the Kelpian and Saru segments of our episode on Star Trek Discovery Episode 12, Vaulting Ambition. You can find links in the description below for the full video, but these are just the edited segments from that. For context, I was talking about things that I'm hoping to happen in the rest of the series. And sliding that hope over to no one ever tasting Saru. Oh, God. All my hope has to go into that. It was... I, I, I have never <laughs> reacted quite so viscerally to something in a show. And I'm a Game of Thrones fan. Hey, here, I'm, like, I'm throwing up a picture now. I, I went and I got a screen cap of, of her feeding her the ganglia. Oh, and just, no. That's a giant bite of the thing. Like, oh. I can't believe how many times they probably had to do that scene. Cause... And it was like slow motion. Mm -hmm. and, and oh, my gosh. Burnham did such a, the, the, uh, Sinequa did such a fantastic job of that, like, I'm going to open my mouth wide enough to put it in there, but I don't really want it to touch my tongue, but now I'm going to eat it. And then she like starts chewing it and she's like throwing up in her mouth. I was like, Oh God, it was yeah, horrible. It's... And I was like, all I could think is like, Saru is like a brother to her. She's like eating her brother. Yeah. At that, at that point in my mind, there was still confusion and still a slight chance that it was Mira Saru that they were eating. Cause I uh, guess I'm, species or whatever but they they all do kind of look alike well there were three kelpians she was choosing from and two obviously weren't saru but that first one who she did choose did look like it like yeah, he looked similar he to was him, the most which is wondering why like she if that's why she chose him because she had no idea what she was choosing him for and that was where yeah. my brain went i was like she made her choose him i'm i'm <laughs> so assuming disturbing. I was assuming that it was merely like she was picking another. Now she gets another slave. slave. I thought she was that's exactly what I thought. I was like, "Oh, I'm granting you a new slave because you brought Lorca back." And I was like, "Ah." Yeah. It, it was a, yet another thing set up in the show where the payoff conversation is going to happen later. They foreshadowed it because Saru specifically asked her, "My people are scarce in our universe, and I don't know. Have you seen anyone else of my kind?" Mm -hmm. And we had, we'd seen Saru because yeah. that was her personal slave. And now we've seen more and we know what they're doing. And I then that led me to the next thought was that we knew that his species had been raised as food. As so food, yeah. that is in his past. But it it's but we didn't know they were past. a delicacy. Oh. The only other info and in spatial anomaly I wanted to cover was Come on, Academy uh, Awards. Everyone else in The Shape of Water gets an Oscar nomination except for Doug Jones. What's up with that? He, I hope he gets a Lifetime Achievement Award at the end. He Because, I mean, he is amazing to be able to act through all of those prosthetics. And they I, need to put a rubber chicken over <clears throat> top the Oscar uh, award that they give him. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, that that's that's what he does. Yeah, like, that is what exactly what he does. And, I mean, his he acts with his entire body. And his <gasps> eyes, like it, that's because as Saru, nothing on his face moves except for his eyelids, and that really does. It was it, it, Matt Myron made that comment about being able to act with only his eyelids, and I mm -hmm. we rewatched yeah. the scene that they were specifically talking about, which is when he was interacting with Laurel. Yeah, we're um, we're jumping back to warp because I realized that we didn't talk about the wonderfulness that was that scene. That's right, you mentioned it, but yeah. we didn't really talk uh, about it. Yeah, so I, we're back at warp. Hey, there we are. Now we're we're in the brig. So he's trying to get Laurel to help Tyler. He's going about it in a wonderfully Starfleetian way. Yeah, he's using uh, logic and impassioned um, arguments, and mm -hmm. I I loved him for it. And but it, he has since they've jumped into the mirror universe, and he had to take over once Lorca left, uh, take over the Discovery. I feel like he's it, come into his own. He came he's... into his own, and I feel like his experience when he was acting captain when they were looking for Lorca before informed his role now like he learned and grew over the course of the show so that when he had to take command again he's doing an excellent job of um embodying the ideals of Starfleet and acting mm -hmm. out of those ideals he which I feel is the polar opposite of what Lorca is doing yeah who you know he's just whatever he needs to do to get to his end goal. Saru is working within the, the confines of this is the identity Starfleet has created. When he is trying to get Laurel to 
help them and help Tyler. When you see him make the decision um, that he was, it was the decision to let Laurel do help. the thing, right? Yeah. You could see the decision be made you know, on his face. And it, this is a face that only, you know, one thing can move on. And I think that is, that is phenomenal. It was fantastic. He is the quintessential captain, uh, Starfleet captain. Now, yeah. this, I don't know how how this season's going to end, but the season needs to end with him in the captain's seat at the Discovery so that Burnham can go on all the missions if she's supposed to be the main guy. Because now, before when he was captain, when he was trying to rescue Lorca from the Klingons, he, he was all panicky Pete a little bit. Yeah, he and, had a lot of knee-jerk so reactions. Part of that was that, oh crap, I can't lose my captain, especially with Burnham around. And and might have just been his needing to to be settled down because you know that Lorca wasn't willing to put him in charge for anything, especially with what we know about Lorca now mm -hmm. uh, for like a real mission. Whenever Lorca had to be off the ship for some reason, it was all right. You're just going to park right here and not do anything and stay all alert the whole time. <laughs> not that you need to tell my boy Saru to do that, but. Yeah. Saru is always at yellow alert. Yeah. He's like the Hulk. I'm always angry. 